This one hormone could explode your hypermobility pain, and it's not what you think. There's strength in finding answers. The hormone is histamine. And in this video, I'm going to be going over why, as a hypermobile person, this might be a big piece of the pain puzzle and what you can do about it. I personally have EDS, POTS, and MCAS, and I used to be disabled with chronic pain, bedridden, as well as with POTS symptoms. I realized that there was a lot behind the scenes that people were not telling me. I'm now the CEO and founder of a team of a doctor, a physical therapist, occupational therapist, registered dietitian, who all specialize in working with hypermobility. And we've seen time and time again with more than 10,000 of you that histamine is oftentimes a big reason why pain is at the level that it is. So let's dig into it. So first of all, as hypermobile people, we're more likely to have comorbidities. Health comorbidities called POTS or dysautonomia and MCAS have overactive mast cells that are dumping things like histamine. I will say, everybody has mast cells, everybody has histamine being dumped into their systems. Histamine is a hormone that actually can help heal your body. At low levels, histamine is being released to cause low levels of inflammation to actually facilitate healing. But for us, we have too much histamine oftentimes being released. I'm not saying it's a one size fits all, I'm not saying everybody does, but many of us do. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing what we see work with many of our clients, sharing what has worked well for me, sharing some studies on this, even though we need far more studies and we need far more diversity in those studies. But with all of this, I'm not saying that this is a one size fits all for you. And I always recommend to talk with your medical team before making any changes. And here is the clicker. Guess where histamine is being released into? Your connective tissue. And you, as a hypermobile person, likely have a connective tissue disorder. So when you have mast cells overactive, dumping that histamine, your mast cells live inside of your connective tissue. So think about not only your muscles, your tendons, but also your teeth, your organs. So when mast cells become overactive and histamine, which is inflammatory, that's the purpose of histamine is to induce inflammation, is being released in excess, not only can your pain explode, your health can explode. So a lot of people, they have appendicitis and they have pain and they have fatigue and all of these things are kind of popping up all at once. They have digestive issues. Where is all of this coming from all at once? It just hits them out of nowhere. That's oftentimes when histamine is involved. Don't get me wrong, if we have a connective tissue disorder, we have a connective tissue disorder, right? That's genetic in nature, that's incurable, that's something that we have our whole lives. But then if you get a virus, like for a lot of people, when they get a virus, when they get an infection, that's when their health spirals and their pain escalates. For some people, it's when they get stressed out or when they go through traumatic incidences. Other people, it's when they go through a significant hormonal shift like pregnancy or like puberty or like perimenopause or menopause, that's when it explodes. All of those can be triggers for your mast cells. So when those things are occurring and you're noticing, oh my gosh, my pain got significantly worse, my instability got significantly worse, all of a sudden I'm having more subluxations or dislocations or muscular tension or pain or POTS symptoms, oftentimes that can be the histamine component of the puzzle. I'm gonna do a pretty brief list here. I do have a longer master class on this inside of the HEAL program that I'll link here in the description. We also have group sessions you can go to on Zoom with our doctor, with our registered dietitian who specialize in histamine issues that you can come to in that same program. But some quick things that we can do. Stress relief is huge. Focusing on methylation if you have a genetic variant like MTHFR. So that's maybe starting with low doses of methylfolate folate or folinic acid, not folic acid. Really talk to your doctor before making any of those changes. I'm not telling you to do that. Supplements that can help are quercetin or PQQ, liposomal vitamin C for some, even though some won't tolerate it well because we can have oxalate issues. Medications that can often help are LDN, that's a mast cell stabilizer, chromal and sodium, ketotophen, trying to stabilize your circadian rhythm. So trying to get sunlight exposure at the beginning of the day or throughout the day if you're not allergic to sunlight. Trying to go to sleep at the same time at night if, if you don't have insomnia, which some of us do. Trying to find the pieces of the puzzle that you have power over. Not saying like, oh, I have insomnia, I can't do that. Try to find what you can do. And we do it imperfectly. We do it one small step at a time, really prioritizing mental health, not getting overwhelmed by the whole picture. You can come back to this video as many times as you would like to. 
they'll be interviewing our naturopath as well as a registered dietitian on this channel. So I really want to give you as many resources as I can on this. And finally, eating a diet where you stabilize your blood sugar. Uh, a lot of people do well with high protein diets and where you maybe pay attention to the foods that make you feel kind of crummy or really tired. We're looking for foods that you feel better upon eating. And again, that's not nutritional advice. Definitely ask your medical team before making any changes. This is just what we see anecdotally really work for mast cell stabilization. Those are all some steps that you could potentially take. And one small step at a time, we're looking for the things that make you feel better upon doing it, even one small percentage. And then we build those small percentages over time to a larger percentage of feeling better. But I'd be really curious. I've talked to some people who just say, yeah, I started quercetin alone and it improved my pain. Some people are like, no, I need to do a lot of things before it improved my pain. As we go through this picture, it's really not saying it's a one size fits all or that your pain is because of histamine issues. It's asking the question and acting as a scientist collecting data with curiosity. Is this what could potentially be going on? And then as we take steps towards stabilizing that, do I feel better? Even just a little bit. Not looking at a little bit as like, oh, I failed, I only felt 5% better. Like, no, that was some logic that I just found because when I dealt with that, it made me feel 5% better. That's where we're going with this, is to ask questions with curiosity and try to find answers. I hope that this has been helpful for you. You are stronger than you may feel. It is possible to feel better.